Hi everyone, Salesforce admin training day 22. Let's go ahead and see what we are going to learn today. We'll talk about the previous session overview and we'll talk about the many-to-many -many relationship and then we'll talk about the hierarchical relationship and we'll talk about the roll-up summary field and the use case. Then we'll start the introduction of the formula fields and how the formula field editor looks like and then we'll have a homework, trial head, today's interview questions. Now, yesterday, we have seen, what did we learn yesterday? Self-relationship, differences between the lookup and master detail, right, master detail relationship, and their observations. Right, we have seen those all things. Now, whenever we create a master detail or a lookup relationship, whenever we create a master detail and lookup relationship, so the concept in the Salesforce is one parent can have a multiple child, right? That means child can have a only one parent. Child cannot have a child cannot have a multiple. So that's the reason whenever we create a master detail relationship. That's the reason whenever we create a master detail relationship or a lookup relationship, it asks to enter only single object. I cannot select the multiple object. That kind of a concept we do not have because we have a only concept is one parent can be linked to the multiple child or multiple child can be linked to the one parent. So whenever we select a master detail relationship or a lookup relationship, it asks about only the parent details of single parent. It is only single parent details it will ask. It will not ask the multiple details. Multiple parent details it will not ask because we have a single parenting concept in the Salesforce. Now, also we have seen the lookup dialogue information, right? So what are the... For example, once we have created the lookup details, once we have created the lookup relationship or a master detail relationship, now what user can do is user can go to the user can go to the any object, the child object. In the child object, they can select the parent record. They can select the parent record. So the parent record here is hiring manager. Right, this is the hiring manager. So whatever details are there, we are able to see here. Now, if I want few more details in the, if I want few more details to be displayed in the hiring manager, we want few more details to be displayed on the hiring manager. That means along with the name of the position, along with the name of the position, if I wanted to display any other field, so in lookup dialog, you can maximum display the only two fields. You can maximum display here only two fields. One is a main field and then you have a second one, which is a called as a sub subheading, right? So it is a main heading and a subheading kind of thing. So you, you can see only two values you can see in the lightning. Whereas in the classic, it opens up the another window. In the classic, it opens up the another window. So when you click on a lookup dialog, so it opens the another window. In this window, you will see the header is here and this is divided into the whatever the fields that you wanted to see. You can see in the multiple fields, multiple columns you can see here, right? Like a position name and a contact number, HR email ID. Those are the details you can see in the classic. But whereas in the lightning, in the lightning, we do not have that concept. In the lightning, we do not have a concept. Maximum, you can see only two fields. One is a main field, which is a Salesforce developer, which is a position name. Along with the position name, you can see another field. Along with the position name, you can see another field. Maximum, you can see only two fields, not more than two fields. Not more than two fields. Now, what are the fields that can be supported by the lookup dialog? Now, somebody asked yesterday. So, the data type that can be supported for the data type that can be supported for the for lookup dialog. 
for lookup dialog. So what are the data types that can be supported? As I can see here, if you observe this, I can see the second one is a number. Second one is a number. Second one is number. Now, what is this? Let me note down all the data types here. So the first thing is that lookup dialog, if you wanted to see the second field value. So what are the field values are there? The first one is a phone data type. The first one is phone data type, you can see. Phone data type, and then you have a number, which is a phone number or a number, any number field. This is the data type which gets supported and it supports the text and it supports the supports the currency. As a second field, you can see either phone or a number or a text or a currency or a date. So date also it supports or else it can support the date time and the time. And apart from this, it can support the percentage. Text also it can support. Only text, not the text area, text area long, text area rich, those cannot be supported. Only the text, it gets supported. And apart from this, we have a geolocation latitude latitude that is also can be supported in the lookup dialog. So these are the data types that can be supported in the lookup dialog. So you can choose the second field from any of this data type. Any of this data type, you can choose it as a second field either phone number or a text, currency, date, date, time, right? Number, percentage, right? Text. So those are the things you can give it as a second, second option or a second field, you can give that. And apart from this, by default, it is also going to display the record ID. So whatever the 18 digit ID is there, the record ID also it is going to display. The record ID is also going to display the 18 digit ID. The 18 digit ID, the record ID. So these are the supported data types for the lookup dialog. Now let's move on. So this is what we have learned in, in the last class. Now so far we have seen in the relationship, one is a lookup, another one is a master. The next concept is many to many relationship. The next concept is many to many relationship. When it is a many to many relationship, when it is many to many relationship, so how can we implement many to many relationship? How can we implement many to many relationship? Now let's assume that I have a two objects. I have a two objects. Now let's say that we have a object Let's say I have a books object and a author object, author object. Now, whenever we have this kind of a concept, books and author, books and author. Now, out of this, which one is the parent and which one is the child? I have a books object as well as author object. Now, out of this, which one is a parent and which one is a child? Parent. Author, parent, and books is a chair. This is our understanding. Okay, so let's go ahead and create it. So assume that I'm creating the author object. This is the author object table, and then I'll create another table which is a books object. This is a books object. Now, like this, I have a two objects author object, books object. Now, in this case, these both are right now independent object. These both are right now independent object. So these are, these both are independent object. Now here, author is having a sum, author object and book object. Now here, author object is having a sum, author's details are there, author records are there. Like a John is from USA, right? Chetan is from India and Robert is UK and Vivekananda is from India and Balaguru Swami from India. These are the author names. These are the author names that records are already available in the object. The records are already available in the object. The second one is book object. 
the second one is book object the book object has a also records like it has a books java programming manual testing asp.net oracle sql c these are the different books are available now right now these two are independent objects there is no relationship right now there is no relationship right now we have a two individual objects one is a author object another one is a book object and each object we have a few records right we have a five records in each object i have a five records now it is possible that it is possible that java java program i have a java program this book is sometimes what happens is books can be written by the multiple authors books can be written by the multiple authors what i mean by multiple author is there are three authors can combine together similarly like john and balaguru swami these both are combined together and they have written the java program they have written the java program including the vivekananda so john vivekananda balaguru swami three members three authors are combined and they have written the java program three authors combined and they have written the java program or else john has also written the java program vivekananda also written the java program balaguru swami also written the written the java program right so three member three authors has written the same book three author has written the same book similarly manual testing similarly manual testing manual testing is written by the vivekananda and chetan these two authors combined and they have created the manual testing right similarly asp.net asp.net is written by the robert and john and balaguru swami john robert and balaguru swami these three authors combined again they have written the asp.net book they have written the asp.net book and then again here we have a oracle oracle sql is written by the chetan and it is written by the robert chetan and robert they, they both written the oracle sql similarly c language book c language book is written by the robert and balaguru swami right so these are the, like this there is a possibility that one author can write a multiple books and book can be written by the multiple authors so what is happening here one author one author can write one author can write multiple books one author can write multiple books multiple authors can write one book multiple author combine together and they can write a one book so ultimately what is happening the relation is it is coming as a many authors can write a many books many authors can write a many books now as per our logic as per our logic author and a book now if you think on author is a parent book is a child right if you think on that now for example i'll create a here as a book is a child so i'll create a some look up relationship here where it is representing the author id where it is representing the author id now java program is written by the john written by the vivekananda written by the balaguru swami now whenever we create a look up relationship whenever we create a look up relationship i can link only one record i can link only one record i cannot link three members record here because the concept for the sales force is single parenting the concept for the sales force is single parenting it's not a multiple parenting right so here in this case for the java program i have a multiple parent records are there i have multiple parent records are there but look up and master does not allow the multiple parent linking only single parent i can link it so this does not work this does not work now for example if i think book is a parent book is a parent author is a child author is a child in that case what i'll do is i'll create a 
lookup relationship in the author object because this is a child object i'll create a author uh, i'll create a lookup relationship on the child object which is referring the book id which is referring the book id now in this case john has returned the javascript as well as asp.net john has written the java programming and asp.net both he has written now one and three i need to link it to the john in the child i need to link the first parent and the third parent now which is not possible i cannot link the two parents into the here in the lookup or master because two parent concept multiple parent concept we do not have we have only single parent linking we have so this is also does not work this is also does not work now in this scenario if you have these kind of a scenarios now what should we do when i say this kind of scenario author object is a parent and book object is also a parent book object is also a parent both of them are a parent there is nothing called as a child object here there is nothing concept is called as a child so i have a two parents i have a two parent objects in that case what we can do is we can implement another object in between these two i can implement another object in between these two so the object is which contains the author id and which contains the book id and number of pages number of pages now author id is so here we have a object name is book author this is a child object i am creating the another object between these two i have a two parent objects i have a two parent objects in between these two i am creating the another object which is called as a book author which is a child object which is a child object now here this child object is author id is linking to the author object author id is here we have a author id right so author id is look up relationship which is looking at the from the child to parent which is the author object similarly i have a book id field here book id field is referring to the book object book id field is referring to the book object now the book id so that means in the child object i have created a two look up fields i have created two look up fields so this side one look up field which is looking for the author parent and another look up field i have created which is looking for the book id which is looking for the book id so i have created two look up fields on the child object now here i can say that a1001 which is a john a101 is linked to the b405 and the number of pages is 900 similarly a100 is linking to the b407 which is the pages are 1000 that means what is happening here it says that a100 which is a john so here i have a two records for the john so john has written john has written b405 book and b406 book john has written two books similarly i can write the a1002 which is a chetan chetan has written the manual testing right 845 pages and also chetan has written the b408 that is a oracle sql which contains the 1400 pages similarly a1003 which is a robert robert has created asp.net asp.net which contains the 1450 pages now like this i'll be implementing it like this i'll be implementing the logic so here whatever the mediator object is there whatever the mediator object is there this object is called as a junction object this object is called junction object many to many relationship or else you call it as a junction object so whenever you have a two parents whenever you have a two parents two different object parents two different object parents and two different objects parents are linked within the child that means child is connected to the two different parent object now in this case i have a multiple parent multiple parent concept multiple parent concept when you have a multiple parent concept when you want to link a multiple records when you want to record link multiple record when i say multiple record one record from the one parent object another record from the 
another parent object right so if you have a, this kind of a scenario then we will go for a junction object so where we will be creating the child object child object is connected to the two parents child object is connected to the two parents one is a lookup look up. both are lookup author id is looking for the author object now book id lookup field is looking for the book object so like this we will create a in the real time like this we will be creating in the real time this is the homework i'll not be creating this object this is a homework so what you have to do is you have to create a two objects you have to create a two objects one is a author object one is a book object in the author object create a field which is called as a author id author name and location similarly in the book object create a book id book title unit price unit price what are the prices there the prices now these are the two individual object created then create another object which is called as a book underscore authors book underscore authors just create it these three are individual objects there is nothing is you are not going to make any changes so first create a author object and second you create a book object then you create a book author object in the book author object create a field called author id create a field called author id so author id is a lookup relationship field data type so which will be looking at the author object and create a second field lookup field which is called as a book id book id is also lookup relationship field which is looking for the book object and then create a number field which says number of pages which says number of pages now here after creating it just insert the records in the both the parent object then link the parent to parent records and then number of pages so this is what you have to do the configuration in the this is the homework this is the homework for configuration now let's move on now here many to many relationship so when we will go for a many to many relationship object one to object two will create a one to many relationship and object two to object one will be having a one to many relationship when you have a this concept then we will go for a many to many relationship that means first object one to many one object connected to the many object two one object to connected to the many object one so if you have a this scenario you will go for many to many relationship if object is associated with one to many relationship from the both the sides that means in both the sides you have right now we have seen the scenario so both the sides when you have then you will refer the many to many association many to many association we can create a many to many association is not possible between the two objects you cannot create a many to many object relationship between the two objects in order to create that you need to have a another child object in order to build many to many relationship between the two objects many to many relationship hello open tamandra please go on mute whoever is not don't have any questions okay so if you want to achieve a many to many relationship between the two objects then we have to go for a another object is called child object which will associated with both the parent or parents with 
master detail relationship or a lookup relationship. We will go for lookup relationship. This is a homework. Now homework is, will you able to implement a lookup relationship or master detail relationship? Now here I said lookup, right? So this lookup field, will you able to create Will you able to create lookup relationship and master detail relationship? So observation is what will happen if you create a master detail relationship? What will happen if you create a lookup relationship the, between from child to this object, child to this object? What will happen? Just observe that and give me the observations. So junction object should be always associated with the parent with master detail relationship or a lookup relationship. Now, while removing any parent record, while removing any parent record from the parent object, the associated child record from the junction object will be get removed. Because if you implement a master detail relationship from the child to parent, you know that this is a child will be deleted whenever we delete a parent. Now the, uh, now, the homework is along with that, when you create a lookup relationship in the junction object, what is the observation? When you create a master detail relationship in the junction object, what is the observation? Right, that's the homework. Is everybody taking the notes of this? So that's what I have explained. Just have you joined the late. So how can you create a lookup field in the book ID? So if you create a book ID here, if I create a book, for example, here I'll create a lookup field, which is looking for the author ID, which is looking for author ID. Now this book, Java program is written by the John Vivekananda and Balaguru Swami. That means one comma four comma five. So you need to link the five five records. You need to link it, which is not possible. As per the Salesforce concept, single parenting, it is only allow the only one record to be linked. So which does not work. Which does not work. Now if you create here book ID, if you create a book ID here. Now John has written the two books. One which is a B405 and then he has written the B407. Now when you create a book ID lookup field here, so you need to link one comma three, which is possible to link three, two records here. It is not possible. You can only link one, one record. You cannot link the more than one record, which concept is not available. In order to have that, we need to go for a child. One is connected to B0, B405, one is connected to B407. So like this, you need to create a two records in the child object. How many lookup fields can be created? This we have already discussed. How many lookup fields can be created in the single object? 40. 40. Right. So I would suggest go through the previous session. Is everybody taking notes of this many to many relationship? The six points. So please take a notes of this. Let me know once you have taken the notes.
you can create it. You can create a one lookup and one one master. You can do that. Yes. So software is associated with the developers, company, client, and user. So it can be done. So developer can work on one company or multiple company. Ideally, as per the rule, developer has to work with only one company. Developer should not be working with the multiple companies. That is a standard rule. Client company can have a client. Com one company can have a multiple client. A one client can have a multiple companies. That's you have to decide it. Now user, multiple users are working to the multiple clients. No, users are restrict with the only one client. When I say users, the users who are there in the Salesforce user. So if they are working with the multiple clients, so they have a multiple credentials of the Salesforce or which is not possible. So between the company client, if you know that there is a multiple companies will be working with the multiple clients and multiple clients are working with the multiple companies, then you can go for it. But as per this, client will be depending on only one company. Whatever the software they have, they will depend on the one company. In case the client has a different technologies, in case client is like a, if the client is, if Yamaha, Let's take Yamaha. Yamaha business is selling the car. If they're selling the car, then they will depending on the only one company to build a software. But if Yamaha is selling the car and also they are selling the um, vegetables, also they are selling the uh, beauty related tips, or they are doing different kind of a business, then in that case, it might be possible that they, they have a multiple companies depending on that because each software is a different. But right now, whatever we have seen, whatever I have observed, the companies are dedicated to one business. If the client is dedicated to the multiple business, then it is altogether different. So if it is a healthcare, healthcare is only related to the health industries, right? So they can, that, that is a business of health. They cannot sell the vehicles. So clients are always dedicated to one business. Is everybody taking the notes? Okay, so let's move on. No, Salesforce does not have it. In order to add that multiple parent record, they came up with the junction object. So that was the issue where it was when I when we have implemented the lookup and master, we cannot link one parent to the one child to the multiple parent, right? I cannot link that. So that's the reason Salesforce has came up with the concept called junction object. So they do not have any of any way to implement. That's the reason they came up with the junction object. So which is a many-to-many -many relationship. Now let's move on. The homework is implement a author object and create a books object. Okay, so this is what we have discussed and also implement another object, book author. Now create a fields in all three objects. Configure the master detail relationship between the book author and the author object. Also configure the master detail relationship between the book author and book object and observe the all the list of this. Now, also along with this, Note down all the observation and then also second time what you do is instead of a master detail relationship, create a lookup relationship here. Create a lookup relationship. So create a lookup relationship between the book author and author object. Create a master detail between the book author and book object. Book object. Now observe this. Now what is happening when you have a lookup to one record and when you have a master detail relationship to the another object. So this side it is a lookup and this side it is a master detail relationship, master detail relationship. So observe that and uh, give me the observation, list of the observations. Now let's move on. 
how many objects do we need in order to implement many to many relationship ma'am in general we create master detail or lookup ma'am in uh, real scenario three objects we need it what is a junction object Junction object is a many to many relationship. Uh, it, it will connect uh, it's both parent with most of mm -hmm. What is junction object? The child object which is, which is associated, associated to both the parent objects. Right. Which requires many to many relationships. Right. So junction object is nothing but it's a child object which will link to the multiple parent records with the different relationship, either master detail relationship or a lookup. Now, whether lookup is possible or not, you guys have to tell me, right? So I'm mentioning here master detail relationship. Now you guys have to tell me tomorrow whether lookup relationship is possible or not. The next concept is hierarchical. The next concept is hierarchical relationship. What is this hierarchical relationship? Now, so far we have seen self relationship, mm -hmm. lookup relationship, lookup relationship. Master detail relationship. Master detail relationship. And then junction object, which is a many to many relationship. Which is nothing but a junction object. Next one, the last relationship is hierarchical. The last relationship is hierarchical relationship. What is this hierarchical relationship? Hierarchical relationship. Now let me go to the sales force. In the sales force, if you look at the sales force, let's go to the sales force and let's go for an account. Discard the changes. In the account, if you go here, details. Now you have a parent object, which is linked to the same object, which is linked to the same object. Also, you have a one more field, which is called as a, you have a one more field, which is called as a report to, now it might be in the contact. Let me go to the contact. Detail section, right, here is the report to. Report to and report to is a different. Report to is a different and whatever the parent account is there, that is also different. That means hierarchical relationship. The word it says hierarchical relationship. Hierarchy, which is nothing but a hierarchy. In usually in the company, we see hierarchy, right? In the company, we see hierarchy. Now, whatever I'm going to explain it, do not get confused this because we have so many options in the sales force, right? So hierarchy relationship is, which is a slightly different from the self relationship, slightly different from the self relationship. What is the self relationship here? Self relationship is nothing but, <laughs> I am from a Dell company. I am from Dell company. I am part of a Dell company. I am part of Dell company. So in the Dell, there are 100 members or a 200 members or a 2 lakhs members. So many members are working on it. So whenever I go to buy a laptop, I'll inform that person that, okay, I am from a Dell company. How can, when I inform that person I am from a Dell company, whenever the person creates a record in the 
Salesforce, whenever the person is creates a record, account record or a contact record, whenever the person creates a record, he link to the company which is called as a Dell. That means the hierarchy is within this, within the Dell company, we received five members, we received four members. If I wanted to know from the Dell company, then I can see that how many members are came per laptop from the Dell, Dell company, which is what I'm doing here. I'm linking the, this is called as a self relationship. Self relationship. Dell is also account and another account which I'm creating right now within the Salesforce and linking to the self relationship called as a Dell. Similarly, we have a hierarchical relationship. Hierarchical relationship is nothing but let's assume that I have an employee object. I have a employee object. When we have an employee object, when we have an employee object, now employee object table has a certain details we have. We have a certain details. So let's assume that we have a different employee details. Ram Kumar, Praveen, Suresh, Swati, Sunny. These are the employees who are there in the company. So Ram Kumar is a CEO, Praveen is a project manager, Suresh is a tech lead, Swati is a senior software engineer, Sunny is a junior software engineer. So like this, we have a few records within the employee table. We have a few records within the table. Now, what does this hierarchical relationship, how can I link? How can I link this hierarchical relationship? Now here, this means, now whenever I create, here we have a five records are there, five records are there. Now, the reason which I need a hierarchical relationship is only going to tell me that if I have to link any person, that means these are the employees who are there, but Sunny reports to whom? Swati reports to whom? Suresh reports to whom? Praveen reports to whom? If I wanted to know, if I wanted to know this kind of a scenario from the record, from the record, I wanted to know. So Sunny reports to, for example, Praveen reports to Ram Kumar, right? And Swa Suresh reports to Praveen. Swati reports to Suresh. Sunny reports to Praveen, right? These are report to fields. These are report to fields. That means these are the contact object. In the contact object, if I wanted to know, in the contact record, if I wanted to know, Sunny reports to whom? Because I wanted to check whenever this person is not available or if this person is not responding. From the hierarchical relationship, this person is report to whom I can cross verify in the field called manager field. In the manager field, I can check Praveen reports to whom. So I can go to this person. This person is a Ram Kumar. Now I can go to the Ram Kumar and I can check with that person why this person is not responding. Now, this is called as a hierarchical relationship. Now you might think on, we have a role hierarchy together. We have a role hierarchy. Now, what is the point of role hierarchy and a hierarchical relationship? What is the point of role hierarchy and hierarchical relationship? Role hierarchy plays a role of sharing the records. If you are in the hierarchical structure, if you are in the hierarchical structure, now whoever person creates this, whoever is creating here, the record can be shared to this person, the record can be shared to this person, right? Whoever is right now, whenever I create a record here, this person cannot see, this person cannot see, only the whoever is created and their manager can see the record. That's a role hierarchy. But what I'm talking here, here I'm talking about hierarchical relationship, which is I'm talking about report to. I just wanted to know the report too. I'm not worried whether the person is able to see the record of this person or not. I'm not worried. I just wanted to check who he reports to. Who is he reports to? Who is the report to person? Who is the report to person? So that option I wanted to check. That option I wanted to check. So in that case, within the contact record, within the contact record, if I open the contact record, there is a field called report to, or you can create a field called manager. 
So where within the same object, you can specify this person is report to whom. So now this person is report to the Praveen. So hierarchical relation is ship, ship is nothing but it is a similar to the self relationship, but there is a thin line between this self relationship is tells about I am a part of the company, but hierarchical relationship tells us that I am reporting to this person. I am reporting to this person. That's a hierarchical relationship. Now, let's move on. So hierarchical relationship is allows to map association of the object within itself. Within the same object, we can able to link the hierarchical relationship. So both the parent and child record will be get existed within the same object, within the same object, similar to the, the one which I have shown in the contact. I have a report to field. I have a report to field. This report to field is basically the Swapna is report to Jan or David. Swapna is report to David. When I say report to, I'm not sharing any records here. I'm not sharing any record. This is tells me that the hierarchy of this particular contact, the hierarchy of this particular contact. Now click on a save. So here, this is what I'm doing is I'm building the hierarchical structure. Now, if I go to here, the hierarchical link, it does not, it's basically it here, Chandu is linked to the David and David is linked to the Swapna and then Hari. Now let me go back to the, I'll remove the David here. I'll remove the David, click on his save. Now let's show you that how the hierarchical is looks like. Hierarchy is looks like simple straightforward Swapna is there. Swapna is there. Now, as soon as I link a report to, as soon as I link to a report to, let's say that I'm reporting to David. I'm reporting to David. When I say report to David, immediately the hierarchy of mine is going to update. So Swapna reports to David. Swapna reports to David. And David reports to Chandu. Now, what happened? As soon as I implement a hierarchy, as soon as I implement a hierarchy, Along with the hierarchy, the role is also attached here. Along with the hierarchy, the role is also attached. Now, Swapna is report to David. David is report to Chendu. And within Chendu, we have a two members. So, Chendu, Chendu one is also displaying here the details. So, here account is all different accounts are there. Now, Swapna's account is a Dell. Swapna account is a Dell. David account is a support group. Chendu account is a support group. Hari account is support group. Where we have a different accounts. But what I did is I linked, I created a report to here. I created a report to, to build the hierarchy. As soon as I link the report to here, immediately along with the hierarchy, it is taken the role hierarchy also and it is included here. It is included here. So that means Right now, this contact does not have a user. Right now, this contact does not have a user. I just created a contact. I just created a contact. Through the contact also, I can build a report. And whenever I build a hierarchy, it is ultimately going to look for the role hierarchy and it will combine the role hierarchy and it will implement. But if I go back to the role back, can I see Swapna? Can I see Swapna there? I cannot. Now, let me go back to the role hierarchy. Now let's go to the setup. Now in the setup, go to the object manager. Now in the object manager, let's go for, sorry, we have to go for a hierarchy. So role. Let's go to the roles. Setup roles. Expand all. Now I have a, here it is a Chendu. Now expand it everything. Now Chendu is reports to whom? Chendu is reports to whom? What is the Chendu, Chendu user? Chendu is 
basically it's a support group. Let me open Chindu here. Chindu is a another contact. Chindu is another contact. Does this Chindu has a user? Does this Chindu has a user? He does not have a user. Now just to clarify that, I'll click on a users. Let's go to the users. And do I have a Chindu user here? I do not have a Chindu user at all. So what I'm doing here is basically I'm building the hierarchy of a contact. I'm building the hierarchy of a contact. It's not a user level hierarchy. It's a contact level hierarchy. I'm building the hierarchy at the object level. At the object level, I'm building it. This is one contact. This is another contact. This is another contact. So I'm building the hierarchy of the contact. So ultimately, when I link the report to whatever this David is there, if this David also report to somebody else, if I go to the David, now if I go to the David here, David is another contact. Let's go to the details. Now David is also report to Chendu here. So it gives me Chendu complete on top hierarchy. It will give you the information. So hierarchy relationship is nothing but both parent and child record will be get existed within the same object and we can build a hierarchy within the object. We can build a hierarchy within the object. Any questions? So hierarchical relationship will be applicable only user standard object we cannot map one user should be associated to another user i cannot do that any questions on this now let's move on homework configure the hierarchical relationship between the user and user object and list out all the observation list out all the observation and what i mean by is we have a user object right in the user object create a field create a field which is nothing but a report to. we have a report to also in the user object manager there is a field called manager let me edit in the user level, we have a field. Okay, right now it is not there, fine. So create a field here, which is a report to build. Create a field in the user object, right? How can you create it? Go to the view fields here. In the view fields, create a new field. Now you click on this new field and create a manager field or a report to field. Now link within the same object and build the hierarchical relationship. Build the hierarchical relationship. Now whenever you go to the user object, whenever you go to the user record, now you will be able to see that this user is report to whom. What I'm doing here, I'm building the hierarchical relationship between the user object. I'm building the hierarchical relationship between the user object. How many objects does hierarchical relationship supports? One object. Only one object. What is that object? Same object. What is that object? One object. Contact. Same object. Standard object, user object. Hierarchical relationship can be implemented only applicable for only user standard object. User standard object. Now there is an assignment. Let me give you the assignment. Now assignment is now let me go back to the sales force. Now, for example, I wanted to build a hierarchical relationship. Click on a view fields. 
right? And then click on a new button. Click on new button. When I click on a new button, when I click on a new button, what happens here? I can see hierarchical relationship. Hierarchical relationship. Only hierarchical relationship is available on the user object. Now, let's suppose I wanted to create a hierarchical relationship on the contact object. Let's go to the, this is a contact object. Let's go to the edit object. In the edit object, in the edit object, go to the fields and relationship and click on a new button. Will I be able to create a hierarchical relationship in the contact object? I do not have a hop option to create a hierarchical relationship. Hierarchical relationship can be implemented within the only one object, which is called as a user object. So hierarchical relationship supports only for the user object. Now, whatever we can see in the contact that is provided by the Salesforce, we have not created it. Salesforce has built it in, they did inbuilt implementation and they gave to us, they gave to us. But on top of it, I cannot create a, any hierarchical relationship in the contact. In the contact, Salesforce already did it. They have already taken care of building the hierarchical relationship of the contact. Now, they are not giving me the any flexibility to create a hierarchical relationship on the contact object or any object. Only the flexibility they are providing us to create a hierarchical relationship only on the user standard object. Only on the user standard object, which is called as a hierarchical relationship. So that is the point, which is here. Hierarchical relationship will applicable only for user standard object. That means we can map one user should be associated with another user. You cannot create a hierarchical relationship for any object. Basically, this option is not visible for any object. Only it is visible for the user object. Is that clear for everyone? So the answer for this is user object. How many object does the hierarchical support relationship supports? Only user object. So these are the trial head links. I'll give you the trial head links. Now, next one, let's move on to the roll-up summary field. Yesterday, we have discussed part of a roll-up summary field. Yesterday, we have discussed part of roll-up summary field. Now, roll-up summary fields can be created when you have a parent object, which is a position object. In the position object, we have a certain fields are available. Like a position Java developer position is open, manual tester developer is open, Salesforce developer is open, Java architect is open, and Salesforce admin position is open. These are the positions are open. That means these are the records which we have created on the position object. Then we have a candidate object. In the candidate, we have a different candidates who are applied for the position. Now these are the candidates which are available, applied for the position here. Now, Jyoti, Ram, Gopal, Sipita, Akash, Shailaja, these are, these are the candidates who are applied for the position, who are applied for the those position. That means Jyoti is applied for, let's assume that Jyoti is applied for P01. Now, here Jyoti is applied for P01, which is a Java developer. Ram Gopal is also up, applied for a Java developer. Sipita is applied for Java architect. Akash is applied for SFDC admin. Shailaja is updated, uh, applied for SFDC admin. These both are applied for the admin. And Sibita is applied for the architect role. And Jyoti Ram Gopal is applied for the Java developer. Right? So here I can link in the child. I can link the parent record. So basically in between the parent and child, I have implemented the master detail relationship, master detail relationship. So, and I'm able to link this, whatever the, each ID is there, each ID is linked to the position. That means whenever I click on the P001, it will open up the position record. It will open up the position record. Right, so this is what we have 
we have done it, right? So we had created the position object, we had created the candidate object, and in between we have linked the relationship between these two. Now, whenever we have a master detail relationship, then only we can create a roll up summary field. Then only we can create a roll up summary field on the parent object. We can create a roll up summary field on the parent object. Now, on the parent object, I can create one new field which is called as a roll up summary field. On the parent object, I can create a new field which is called as a roll up summary field. In the roll up summary field, whenever I'm creating the roll up summary field, there are different type of roll ups. There are different type of roll ups. That means here, Whenever I'm creating it, I can choose it here, different role type, roll up type, different roll up type. Do I want a count of the record? Do I want a sum of the record? Do I want a minimum of creation of record, maximum of creation of record, whatever the minimum maximum is there. Now I can choose here different type of roles, role type, roll up, roll up types. So these are the different roll up types. So these roll up types, I can choose any one of this while creating the roll up summary. For example, if I have chosen the, if I have choose the count, I have chosen the count, I wanted to get the count of records that are associated with this parent object. List of the count of the chaired records that are associated with the position object. Now in this case, Jodhi and Ram Gopal are linked to P001. That means here the count, I'll get it as a 2. Sibita is linked to the P004. Now here the count P004 will get the 1. But P002, do I have anybody linked to the P002? Nobody. So I'll get a 0. P003, I do not have anybody linked to the P003. So I'll get a count is 0. P004, anybody like Sibita is applied. So 1 candidate. So I'll get the count is 1. P005. SFDC admin, two members are applied. So the count is two. So like this, we will get the count. Now, like this, we will get the count. Now, yesterday we had created this scenario. Yesterday we had created this scenario. Now, let me check whether we are still on that. So when I go to the object manager, let's go to the candidate object. Candidate object in the candidate object. What is the relationship that we have between the position and candidate? So it's a master detail relationship. Perfect. Now let me go back to the position object. Let's go back to the position object. In the position object, do I have a roll up summary field? Do I have a roll up summary field? I do not have a roll up summary field. We have created, we have, we had created yesterday and we deleted it. We had created yesterday and we deleted it. So Let's go ahead and create it. Now I wanted to get the count of child reports. So I can choose the roll up summary field, click on a next. When I select the roll up summary field, it will ask what you want. So I'll create here count. I'll create here count. Now when I create a count, let me cross verify. Remember yesterday we had created this positions. Let's go to the Salesforce developer. I do not have. Okay. So count. So whenever I'm creating the count, in step three, it is going to ask you that calculation. Right? So what is the child? How, which object do you want to summarize it? So my child object is this candidates. Now possible that parent can be linked to the multiple child. Parent can be linked to the multiple child. Because here, this position is linked to the candidate object. Position might link to the another object also. Position might link to the another object also. Right? So if you have a multiple object, now you need to choose it here. Which object do you want to summarize it? I wanted to summarize the candidate object. I wanted to summarize the candidate object. Now here, roll up types is count, sum, minimum, max. Count is, it is simply going to take the count of it. Sum is nothing but, now whether you wanted to sum, summarize the, what are the sum of current CTC? What are the candidates that are linked to this particular position? What is their current CTC? Total sum of it. What is the expected CTC? Total, I mean, so if I choose, like there are two candidates are applied. Now if I give a position to two candidates, 
what is the expected CTC combine, some of the expected CTC combining those two candidates. Now, will company will be able to offer this much CTC or not? So if I wanted to know that, you can use uh, some expected CTC. Minimum, so minimum, what is the minimum current CTC? What is the minimum they are expecting? What is the expected minimum uh, expected CTC? Similarly, maximum expected CTC. So these all you can create it. So right now I'm going to take for a count. Click on a next button. Click on next button. By default, it is visible. And roll-up summary field is a read-only field. Roll-up summary field is read-only field. Nobody can edit it. Nobody can edit. Click on the next button and save. Roll-up summary fields are read-only fields which are generated by the, the count is automatically updated by the system. The count is automatically updated by the system. So, which is a, this is a read-only system system generated field. This is read-only system generated field which is automatically updated by the system based on the what are the related child records, whether it is deleted, updated, whatever is happening on it, you can create it. You can create it. Now, first observation on the role of summary field is it's a read-only system generated field. Read-only system generated field whose values will be generated by Salesforce system based on the roll-up type selected by the user. What are the roll-up type you have selected? Based on that, Salesforce automatically updates your account. You need not to do anything. And nobody can edit the roll-up summary field. This is the first observation. And the second observation is roll-up summary field value cannot be editable. Roll-up summary field is cannot be editable. We cannot edit the user cannot edit. User cannot edit. And the third observation is roll up summary field is summarize the child record into the various groups based on the parent record. That means if you wanted to summarize the child record, you wanted to know only the child records that are from the Hyderabad. You can summarize only the records that are received from the Hyderabad. You can summarize the child records only we receive the candidates from the Bangalore. So you can summarize the records based on the various groups. Right, so that is another observation. And then the third observation, fourth observation is the role of summary performs the operation by using the role of type or a aggregate function. Or a aggregate function. What is the aggregate function here? Minimum, maximum, these are the aggregate functions. So we have a different role of types which are already available by creating the role of summary field, which we can select it. And then next observation is, once the operation has been done, then it will be represented the result on the parent record inside the field, inside the field. That means whenever we update a child record, whenever I delete a child record, or whenever I create a child record, automatically the result, the result of the role of summary field is reflected on the parent object. In the parent object, it will be reflected. Now here it is a count is two because on the Salesforce position developer, I have a two candidates which are associated to this. So that's the reason I can see the count is two. Count is two. So whenever we create a roll-up summary field, there are four roll-up types are there. First one is a count. First one is count. So count is nothing but it will count the number of records that are exist in the group. Second one is a sum of the fields. Third one is minimum of the field, maximum of the field name. So count is nothing but it will count the number of records exist in the group. Sum of the field is nothing but it will get the sum of all the values exist in the specified field. So as soon as you select a sum, automatically you see that there is a one field which is enabled to choose the field. So you need to choose the existing field. You need to choose the one field. Based on that field, it will summarize that. Minimum field, minimum field also same. It will find out the least value of the specified field. Out of the multiple records, what is the least one which is there, it will get it. So the field type is can be either currency, number, percentage, state. So what are the data types of the fields that can be seen in the minimum? 
The data types of the fields can be seen in the minimum is currency, number, percentage, date. These are the data type fields which can be visible on the minimum field. In the summarized field, what are the data type fields can be visible? Currency, number, percentage. Now, if you look at the one which we have here, we have already created it. This is the roll-up summary field. Click on edit. Now, here it says that count is normal. When I select a sum, the field to aggregate, so aggregate fields, it is going to display. Right now, in this field, we have a currency field. So that's the reason it is displaying the currency. But what else we can support it along with the currency? You can support the number and a percentage. Minimum. Minimum also supports the currency, right? Currency and date, currency, date, percentage, number fields. Maximum fields also, it will find out the highest value in the specified field. If you have a four records, and if you want to combine these four records and find out what is the maximum one, so it will give you the highest value that is specified in the record, right? So the fields that are supported here is data types that are supported, currency, number, percentage, rate. Currency, number, currency, number, and percentage date. These are the fields that is gets supported. So roll up summary fields applicable only on the master object or a parent object in the master detail relationship. And how many roll up summary fields can be created? Maximum 25 roll up summary fields you can create it per object. Maximum you can create it 25 roll up summary fields per object. Now let's see another use case of the roll up summary field. So configure the roll up summary field to represent the number of immediate joinees. I wanted to know how many candidates can join immediately. I wanted to know how many candidates can join immediately for this position. Now, if I wanted to know that, then in the parent object, which is a position object, and here child object is a candidate object, we need to create a roll-up field on the position object, which is on the parent object. And the field name is, let's take it as a immediate joiners. Immediate joiners. Now, I cannot take all the records of the immediate joiners. Basically, if I have a five candidates are there, out of five candidates, I wanted to know out of these five candidates, who is the candidate that is specified the notice period is immediate join, immediate joining. So I wanted to know. So out of five, how many are ready to join the immediate? So that means I need to apply a condition there. I need to apply a condition. That condition is notice period equal to immediate joiner, immediate join. So that condition we need to apply it. So count, I'm going to take a count of it. Now, this is the use case. This is the use case. Now, I wanted to know who are the candidates that can join immediately. Now, let's go to the candidate object. Let's see that do I have any field which is going to specify that I'm going to join the company immediately. Candidates, now here I have a different details which I have notice period. In the notice period, okay, I'll add a one more field here, immediate join. In the notice period, I will add one more field which is called as a immediate join. So let's click on the edit object. In the edit object, I'll go to the notice period field. Now we have a notice period field. In the notice period field, I'll add another pick list value. I'll add another pick list value. Here I have a one month, one week, 15 days, two months, three months is there. So now I wanted to add new one, which is called as a immediate join. Let's say that immediate join. Now, this is the field which I'm adding here. Click on the save. 
Click on save. Now let's edit here. Now it is displaying at the bottom of it. So what I'll do is I'll click on a reorder. I wanted to reorder because immediate join is displaying at the bottom. I wanted to bring it on top. Now click on a save. Now let's go back to the candidate object. Now let's go to the candidate object. Now let's click on here, all. Now I have a, let's create a one more record here. I have a two records, I'll create a one more record. I'll clone this. Okay, this is another candidate. Another candidate name is, let's take, Neeraj. So let's take the Neeraj. So another candidate is also applied for the same row. So right now I have a two or three records are there. Three records are applied. Three members, three candidates are applied for the same position. Three members are applied for the same position. Now yeah. here in the pick list, In the pick list, I'll add here um, notice period. Where is the notice period? So I'll add the notice period. I'll move this to the upper position. Click on a save. Now, notice period, I'll say that first person is going to join immediately. Second person is also going to join immediately. Third person is in 15 days. Now, this is the data which I have in the candidate record. This is the data which I have in the candidate record. So the use case is I wanted to identify number of immediate joiners for that particular position. So for this Salesforce developer position, I wanted to identify how many candidates, how many candidates are can join immediately. How many candidates can join immediately. Now let's go here, create another role of field. So role of field has to be created on the parent object. In the parent object, click on a new button. And here I'll say that role of summary field, click on the next button. Now here, let's say this is a immediate joining. Immediate joiners. Now click on a next. Now it asked me the summarize one is a candidate object. Now I wanted to get the count. Now this time I wanted to apply the filter criteria. Filter criteria is notice period equals to immediate join. Only I wanted to get the count of records for the immediate join. Now click on the next button. Now click on the next and save. Right. Sometimes what happens is company looks for only the candidate who are can join immediately. Now, sometimes the, the candidates, all the candidates will say that we are not going to join immediately. We have a some timeline within the current company. So at the first time, whenever we come to the position, the first thing the manager wants to look at is there any immediate joinees are there? Sometimes it will be immediate joinees are zero. If the immediate joinees are zero, then he will, instead of looking for the related list, he will say that we are looking for the immediate joinees. So he will inform HR. Now, out in this position, there is nobody who can join immediately, right? So we need who can join the immediately. So can you confirm it? So manager is going to talk to the HR. So HR going to again follow up with the candidates. Now, if he says that immediate joinees are some count is there. So they are happy. Now they can go to the related list and they can view the candidates here. They can view the candidates. Now in the related list, I cannot see the field who all are can join the immediate. So what I can do is I can go to the position object page layout. In the page layout, let's go to the custom page layout. In the custom page layout, 
go to the related list. In the related list, we have a candidate. Now here I wanted to understand number of notice period. So here notice period and also I wanted to understand current CTC, expected CTC. Click on OK. Now let's save this. Now let's refresh the position record. Let's go to the related list. In position record, I can see that. So manager can go to the related list and he can view out of this who all are immediate joining. They can simply go to the this candidate and start the interview. And also they can filter out the CTC who are expecting the more. If both are expecting the same CTC, then in that case, they will do the interview for the both of them. And based on the interview result, they are going to take the candidate. So that's how we create a roll-up summary field in the real time. Now homework for the roll-up summary field, configure the roll-up summary field on the account object to calculate the total revenue generated for each customer. Now on the account object, on the account object, you need to calculate the total revenue generated for the each customer. That means here the parent object is an account and the child object is a opportunity. Child object is opportunity. Now roll up type. Roll up type is you need to choose the sum amount. The field is amount you need to choose it. Roll up field is account object. And then roll up type is count. Is everybody taking the notes of roll-up summary field, the previous observation and homework? No. So let me go back to the... Now this is everybody has taken this. The role of summary is yesterday we have discussed and today also we have discussed. That's the reason I'm going through this. Take a notes and let me know once you have taken the notes. Okay. So these are the different options, roll up type, we have it. So just take a notes of this.
Is everybody taking the notes? Okay. And roll-up summary fields are, roll-up summary field can be applicable only on master and parent object. And maximum we can create 25 roll-up summary fields per object. Is everybody taking the notes? Now this is a use case that we have implemented it and the homework, taking notes of the homework. Is everybody taking the notes? Let's move on. Now, how many roll-up summary fields can be created per object? 25. 25. 25. And what are different aggregate functions while creating the roll-up summary field? Max, min, sum, count. Count. Right. Which object should we create roll-up summary field on the parent or on the child object? Parent. Parent. Okay. Can developer edit roll-up summary field? No. no it's, only... it's only read only. Right. Now here we have completed the all the relationships. All the relationships in the Salesforce we have completed. The next topic we are moving on formula fields. The next topic we are moving on formula fields. What is the purpose of formula fields? Now, till this point, whatever we have discussed, all the relationship which we have discussed it and we have completed all the relationship. Now, we are moving on to the another one, which is formula field. 
Now, before moving on the formula, friend, let me go to the uh, let's go to the fuzzy fields and relationship and click on a new. Now we have created here. Now we know how to create a URL field. We know how to create a team text encrypted text area, text area long, text area, text pick list, pick list, multi pick list, phone, percentage, number, location, email, date, time, date, currency, checkbox. Right, so we know how to create all these fields. Then we have seen the, then we have seen, then we have seen the master detail relationship, lookup relationship, roll up field, and we know how to create a auto number. External lookup relationship also we have created initially. External lookup relationship also we have created. So this is basically bringing the external object data into the Salesforce. So external object ID, if you wanted to bring the external object ID, then we have to choose this. This is also we have discussed in our previous session. If you are not clear, so just go through the external lookup relationship. Now the next one is the last option which we have here is a formula grid. The last option which we have here, formula. Now, how can we create a formula field? First of all, what is the formula field? What is the formula field? As the word says formula, as the word says formula, that means without any development, without much development, if I wanted to build some kind of a calculation, if I wanted to implement some kind of a calculation, Without using the Apex, without using the Apex, if I wanted to build some kind of a calculation, if I wanted to go for any formulas, then we can go with the field called formula field. We can go with the field called formula field. So formula is nothing but it's a read-only field. Nobody can edit the formula field. Users cannot edit. Developer cannot edit. So whenever we create a formula field, it's basically read-only field. What it does is basically it derives the value from the, the expression. What are the expression I give? So what are the expressions? So any ex expressions could be like, a, I wanted to calculate the sum of two fields. I wanted to calculate sum of two fields. So this is one expression. Or else I wanted to get the tax details. I wanted to get the for example, I have a tax of 5% tax is there. Now, tax is available for the every business, whatever that you work on it, for whether it is a you are working in the company or you are running a business, whatever you do, everything will have a tax in India. Right? So, for example, for my salary, whatever my salary is there, that annual salary, right? So, annual salary or annual revenue, Whatever this annual revenue is there, this annual revenue, whatever I'm getting the annual revenue, on top of it that I wanted to apply the tax. Tax is 5% tax. Now, after deduction of this tax, how much we are getting it, I wanted to do the calculation. I wanted to do the calculation. So how will I do it? I will do it annual revenue multiply by 5% of tax. So that means multiply 5 and by 100, by 100, right? Like this, I'll be doing the calculation. For this thing, I do not need to write a code. For simple one line of calculation, I do not write a code. What I can do is I can implement a formula field. In that formula, I can specify this expression. I can specify this expression. Now, I should be having a field which will tell me what is my annual revenue. And that field multiply by whatever the tax is there, the tax details by 100. So, whatever the expression is there. So, it will evaluate the, it will evaluate the, whatever the expression that we have given, it will give us the result in the formula field. So, formula field is nothing but where the, it's a read-only field. It's a read-only field. By using the formula field, what I can do is I can write a simple expressions which can be, which I can write it in one line and a two line and get the output from the formula field. And these fields are cannot be edited. These fields are cannot be edited. Now use case of it here. 
create a formula field on the account object to calculate the 5% of annual revenue as a service tax. Now I have a service tax for everything. I have a service tax for the everything. Now how can I implement if I wanted to calculate? Now I wanted to create a formula field on the account object. On the account object, I wanted to create it. So let's go to the account object. In the account object, I wanted to create a formula field a formula field on of what so here i have a field called annual revenue so here i have a field called annual revenue so whatever this annual revenue is there right based on that amount for example here i have an annual revenue is uh 20 lakhs or twenty thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars So $20,000 is the annual revenue. Now, whatever this annual revenue is there, for this annual revenue, I wanted to apply a service tax. I wanted to apply service tax. And that service tax is going to, once it is detected the service tax, then I wanted to know the final, after deduction of the service tax, then I wanted to know the final amount. Right, so after the service tax deduction, what is the amount that I'm getting as an annual revenue? I wanted to know that information. In that case, what we will do is, we will create a formula condition, annual revenue multiplied by five by 100. Right, so this is the condition we will create it. Now let's go ahead and create it. Now what I'll be doing is on the account object, click on edit object here. Once I click on the edit object, now here fields and relationship, I'll create a new field. Now I'm going to create a formula field. Now I'll select a formula field, click on a next. When I click on a formula field, it is going to ask me the what is the label name. The label name, it says that service tax. Now I'll create a service tax here service tax now service tax i'm creating it now here it says that formula return type formula return type that means whenever i'm implementing the formula whenever i'm implementing the formula there should be a, some output for this formula right so there should be an output i'll be getting it so out output could be a number output could be a currency output could be a percentage, output could be a checkbox, output could be a text, output could be a data type, date, and output could be a time or output output could be a date time. So any of this data types, it is going to support it. So whatever the output is there. So based on the output, if it is a currency output, if it is a currency output, then you need to choose the data type of the formula field is currency here you need to choose the data type is currency if it is a output is a number then choose the number if the output of the formula field is a text then choose the text now you need to choose the right data type whatever the return type what is the output of the formula field is there based on that choose here based on that choose here so now i'm choosing the currency now click on a next button when I click on a next button, it will give certain details here. It is give certain details. Right now, I'm creating a just one formula field. In detail, we will go tomorrow. Now, in the step three is so many informations are available in the step three. Step one is I'm selecting the formula field. Step two is I'm providing the field label name and what is the return type. Step three is enter the formula. What are the formula that you wanted? Enter that formula. Now the formula which I wanted to enter is annual revenue. Now click on here advanced formula. Now this step three in detail we will see tomorrow. Right now I'm going in the very high level. As soon as you reach to step three, just click on the advanced formula. Just click on advanced formula and then click on here insert field. Insert field from the insert field, you can choose the account, 
from the account, select the whatever the field that you want, annual revenue, I need it, right? So where is the annual revenue that I have? Do I have an annual revenue here? Yeah, here is the annual revenue. Select the account object. In the As soon as you select the account object here, it can show all the fields that are exist in the account. Now click on here, insert. Now what is the logic that I'm going to build here? The logic I'm going to build here, annual revenue multiply by. Now here, multiplication. I wanted to add the operator. How can I add the operator? Here you have an option called insert operator. So just click on the insert operator, then choose the multiplication. So here I have a multiply. Then I can enter, for example, five is my tax. Or else if you do not want to choose here operator directly, you can enter, that's okay. You can directly enter here, whatever you want, divided by 100. Now check the syntax. Is the syntax is right or wrong? Now, it, if it is everything is perfectly fine, it will give no syntax error. No syntax error. And then I'll click on the next button. I'm not changing anything here. I just added the formula field. As it is, whatever Salesforce is giving, I'm just using the those options. I'm not changing any of these options here. Click on the next button. Click on next button. And then it is a read-only field visible to by default, whatever the options it is giving, it is visible. Now, what I'll do is I'll go back to the account. Just refresh here. Now, right click, empty cashier hard reload. Detail section. Now, am I able to see the service tax? Now, service tax is this one. Annual revenue is $20,000. And service tax is, once it is deducted the tax, this is how I'm getting the $1,000 I'm getting it. $1,000 I'm getting it. Right? That is the after tax deduction. After tax deduction, this is the amount I'm getting it. Now, this is the read-only field. No more in depth, we will see tomorrow. Right, so that's all for today. We will see tomorrow. This is just a very high level how the formula fields gets created. Now, in depth, we will see tomorrow onwards. Any questions?